Well, good morning to each one of you as we look backwards toward Christmas and the celebration of Christmas. And now today, we are looking forward into the new year of 2021. I want you to do it with a smile on your face. It is my privilege, absolute privilege, wonderful privilege, to speak to a truly great church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And you've allowed me this opportunity to come to you, and I thank you for it. I really do. I brag on you, dear people, and your great love for the Lord. And I do hope you had a great Christmas. We do not know what 2021 will hold. But as I was saying to some people the other day, I hear so often about people making remarks like, they'll be so glad when 2020 is over. And it's in the rear view mirror and we don't have to deal with it anymore. And I said to them, you know, the day may come that you'll look back and think about 2020 and you'll think about it with blessings in your heart because it was during a very troubled year that you came to realize just how much God loves you. You know, we recognize the love of God during a time of trouble and disillusionment and sometimes disease more than during the good times. And so, yes, 2020 has had an entire menu of troubles for us personally, for our families, for our nation. But wasn't God faithful? Wasn't God faithful to you and to me every step of the way? And I, I just want to take a moment to thank you. And Marilyn wants to thank you for all of the... the um, times that we get little cards from you and emails and texts that you're praying for us and that you love us and we love you. We truly do love you. And so in order to have a good 2021, don't forget now on New Year's Day to be sure to eat your black-eyed peas and hog jaw. Now if you want to have a good year, Black-eyed peas and hog jaw, that's what you've got to do. And don't forget, don't forget, you that are with us, all you got to do is just remind me, and I'll try to find you a good godly man during 2021, a good godly man that also is very wealthy and also has a very bad heart. And that way you can live with him a few weeks or months. He'll die and because he's saved, he'll go to heaven so he'll be happy. And you'll have all his money and you'll be happy. So just remind me, 2021 could be your year. <laughs> but very seriously, I want us to use a Bible example for a message today. And I hope you'll... I hope you'll really take this message to heart because there will be some places as a saved person living for God that you are going to visit in 2021 and you won't have to travel a mile, you won't have to get on an airplane or get in an automobile, but there are some places that every one of us who are saved will visit, you will visit during 2021, and I want to share these with you. And to get us started, turn to Revelation chapter 1, and we're going to look at a man by the name of John. John was the apostle of love, preached love everywhere he went. We think he was about 96 years old when he wrote the book of Revelation, and I want us to see some things that John has to say about places that we are going to visit. Now, first of all, John says in John 
in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, Revelation 1, verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now I want you to take your ink pen, take your pencil. Here is the first thing, the first place you're going to visit. You're going to visit your family. You're going to visit your family during the year 2021. You are. You've got family. You're going to visit them. Not all of your family are with you. Some have already gone into heaven. But you're going to visit them too in your mind and in your spirit. Notice John said, I, John, who also am your brother. We are a family. Not necessarily by blood. Have you noticed that sometimes you are closer to people who are not blood relatives than you are your own blood relatives. That's the reason he went ahead and said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion, and companion. I know there are people in your family and my family that we may have a blood relationship with, but we don't have the same heartbeat. We don't have the same mindset. We don't have the same thoughts about God and how important God is. We are not companions to them. But there are people that you can think of right this very moment, perhaps seated there with you, that are not blood kin, but they are companions. There's a unity of the heart. There's a spirit. And... You're going you're gonna to have these thoughts about your family. You're going to visit the place of your family in your mind, those who are in heaven and those that are with you yet. Some may live on a distant shore somewhere or in another state. But your family is constantly in your mind now, isn't it? Family members, some you're worried about, some who are very sick. And when I say family members, remember, I'm not just talking about blood relatives. I'm talking about those who are very near and dear friends to you. And then, of course, you need to understand that you have a family that is yet to come. Family members, not only that are going on to heaven, but you've got family members that are yet to come. May I tell you, that is one real incentive for me to do the very best I know how to live for God during this coming year of 2021. We're all getting of the age that it won't be very long until we're gone. Either Jesus is coming in the rapture or we're going to leave on the wings of an angel at the hour of our death. But our days are limited and our children and our children's children they will have children. And our legacy and our heritage can go on and on and on and on. And you need during the year of 2021 to sometimes stop and pray. And perhaps you've never done it. But to pray for the well-being and the Christian spiritual nurturing of grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren that you will ever see in this world. But they need your prayer. Maybe you've never thought about that. We need to visit the place of our family during 2021. And we really need to spend more time praying for them. Really, we need to pray more and more with urgency and fervency for those that we have yet with us and for those who are yet to come. So John says, I have family, I have companions, and how good it is to have companions. How good it is to have family. It's wonderful if they are blood relatives, 
but of how wonderful it is just to have people that we can count on, that we know love us and know they're going to be praying for us and we're going to be praying for them. And see, all of that's going to happen during 2021, regardless of whatever else happens that's distressing and troubling to you. Take great heart. You do have family, both blood and non-blood, that care about you. Isn't that wonderful? Now then, John says there's a second thing. Another place we're going to visit. Verse 9, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos. Now, he was on a little rocky island, about 10 miles long and 6 miles wide, just off the coast of Greece. John was on the Isle of Patmos. That represents for us another place that we are going to visit during 2021. We are going to visit a place of fears. First place, place of family. Second place is the place of fears. Now let me tell you what the Romans would do because they owned that that island, and they owned literally the known world at that time. Patmos was the place that they would dump hardened criminals, murderers, rapists, brutal men. They would also dump their mentally insane people, people that were crazed with emotion, aggressive, fearful, violent people. Those would be the companions that John would have on that island. It was not an island where people lived who were normal, decent, hard-working, loving people. So here John is. And he's separated from the ones that he loves because he's the apostle of love, his family and companions that we've just talked about. And here he is on the Isle of Patmos. And being here on the Isle of Patmos... The sea separated him. And he says in another place and that he's his own vial of Patmos and there was no more sea. And, I, and when he's talking about heaven in the book of Revelation, and there was no more sea. And I don't think he was saying, well, I don't like water and there won't be any water in heaven. I think he was sitting on the Isle of Patmos. God gave him this revelation. And what it meant to him was, the thing that separates me from my loved ones will be gone. That sea that called the Aegean Sea between Patmos and Greece and the rest of the lands, even up to Israel and Jerusalem, that sea will be gone. I don't have a boat. The Romans have left no craft for me to get across to where they are. But I'll see my loved ones again. But right now he's living in a place of fear with these wretchedly cruel men that are there. So he had that. Those were the fears of being there. The fears of not experiencing the love of those that he does love. Some of you know that. You have family members. You'd give anything to see them. Maybe you haven't seen them in two or three years. And the fear of maybe never seeing them again. Or maybe you've got family members that once you had a wonderful, loving relationship, and now you're separated by a sea of resentment and malice and heartache, and you try to make up with them, and you try to encourage reconciliation, but they won't have any, anything to do with it. So there's a sea in your life that's separating you from people you love. Not a watery sea, but a sea of distance, geographical distance, or may, maybe a sea of hatred and malice. And oh, how you'd love to be able to embrace these people once again. That was a fear that John had. Maybe that he'll never do it because at his age, he may never see them again. Maybe you feel that way. The sea of trouble and anger and hatred may never be crossed where you'll hug those that once loved you and you loved them and had sweet relationship and that's nothing but bitterness. And you fear it may never happen. 
that you'll have a good relationship again? Or, or you fear you may not live to see your loved ones who geographically live somewhere else. And then, of course, there's the problem of, of loneliness. He was very lonely for these people. And the problem of the limitations of being able to see them. So here John is in a place of fear. And I want to say to every one of you, you're going to face just like John. You're going to face places of fear in the coming year. Now, it may be the fear of sickness. Or maybe there's somebody in your relationships, either family or non-family, very close companions, that's desperately ill. And you fear 2021 will be a year they'll never see the end of it. And you're going to miss them. And you're going to hurt over that. So it may be disease. It may be heartache. It may be pain. But there will be times of fear. At the very best, even if you have great health and your friends and family have great health, you know it. You know from personal experience. There's never been a year in your life that you didn't have some kind of fear. But just think of it this way. Better things are coming. They were for John and they are for you. Now look at what he says here. I, John, in verse 9, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos. For the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So here he is. He's there, and he's there because he's been faithful to the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He says in verse 10, as a result of those things, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now what does that mean? You're going to have times of faith. During 2021, yes, you're going to have fears about your family, about your loved ones, about yourself. It's going to be terrible fears. You're going to spend sleepless nights in fear. But just like John, if you'll stay faithful to the Word of God and faithful to your testimony, the Bible says you will have times of great faith. You'll have a place of great faith. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke. I wanted to know who it was speaking. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. And he goes ahead to describe this Son of Man. And of course, it's Jesus. So you're going to have a place that your family is going to be very important to you. You're going to visit a place of importance with your family. And then you're going to visit a place of fears like Patmos. But amidst all that, you're going to find a place of faith. Yes, you're going to have faith. How do I know it? Because Jesus said to Peter on one occasion, Peter, Satan is going to sift you. But I am going to pray for you that your faith fails not. You're going to visit a place of faith. Yeah, Satan is going to try you just like he did Peter. And you're going to feel lonely like John was on the Isle of Patmos. You're going to feel limited because you couldn't see your loved ones on the other side of the water. You're going to miss those who are already in heaven. But you remain faithful, dear brother, dear sister. You remain faithful. And you will. During 2021, you will, in the darkest hours that you have, you will find Jesus, just like he did. Right in the middle of all his fears, he stayed true to the Word of God. And as a result of staying true to the Word of God, 
He was visited by Jesus who came up behind him. That seems like a very unlikely place. May I tell you something? You may find Jesus in some unlikely places. During the times of heartache and questions that will surely come your way, if you'll remain faithful, just like Jesus came up, almost sneaked up behind John, you may suddenly find Jesus coming up to give you assurance, give you a hug, to love you. It might be while you're shopping in a supermarket. It might be in a dark night while you're asleep. He sneaks up on you. It might be while you're visiting friends, and or maybe you have to go to the hospital. I am telling you, dear brother, dear sister, I am telling you because I love you and it's the truth. As you go into 2021, you can go in there boldly. You can go boldly in there. Because in the course of the year when you have your personal island of Patmos experience in the midst of your fears, you stay true, you stay anchored to the Word of God, and Jesus will visit you. And then you're going to visit a place of focus. Look what it says in verse 10 again. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice. We've already read it. Now what do I mean you're going to have a place of focus? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for what I'm about to tell you? Will you just simply listen real well to what I'm about to tell you? It is not important where you are. It is important whose you are. John belonged to Jesus. Don't you belong to Jesus? Don't you belong to Jesus? Let me tell you something. In 2021, you're going to have some fears. But you've got family. You've got some that love you that are not even blood kin. So you got family. You're not by yourself. You have family. You're going to have fears. You got faith because you're staying true to the Word of God. So you're going to have a place of focus. You know what that place of focus is? When you come to understand, I don't need to be looking. I don't need to be looking at where I am. I need to keep my eyes on whose I am. You may be in a place of gladness, and I hope you are, and you will be. But remember whose you are. You may be in a place of terrible torment and physical pain. Right in that hospital room, intensive care unit, wherever you are that you're in horrible pain, just remember whose you are. Get your mind off of where you are. You may be in a place of loneliness when people have forsaken you and betrayed you during 2021. Don't look at where you are. Look at whose you are. John knew immediately Jesus was there and he belonged to Jesus. He knew it. How did John know that? Well, he wrote something. He said in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This same John on the Isle of Patmos, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And it will for you. 2021. It'll get dark. But you remember whose you are, you'll have light. And the darkness comprehended it not. And then I want you to see something. I want you to see this. He says in verse 9, He was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. But the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But look at verses 12 and 13. This same John that knew he had family and companions, knew he had fears on the Isle of Patmos, knew he had faith. He knew that. He got his focus right. 
because he said in verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's you. That is you. Sister, brother, that's you. In 2021, as many as received him, have you done that? To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Dr. W.A. Criswell, that great pastor at First Baptist Dallas, Texas, said when he was a young lad, he would hear people giving testimonies that they knew they were saved because they saw a ball of fire roll down the aisle the day they got saved. Or they saw a hundred angels come fluttering by the day they got saved. Or he heard great rejoicing coming from the heavens the day he got saved. He said, to be honest, I never had a ball of fire when I got saved. Didn't have that. And I didn't hear angels rejoicing. I didn't have all of that. But he said, when I get to heaven, and God looks at me at the door and says, why should I allow you in? If I said I saw a ball of fire when I got saved, God said that's not good enough. Well, I heard a hundred angels saying, that's not good enough. Well, God, I'm just going to tell you what you said through your servant John. You said to as many as received him, and I've done that. And believe on his name, I've done that. You said if I do those things, then I'll be a child of God. And God said, that did it. Come on in. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. That's what I'm looking for. You know how to have assurance you're all right with God in 2021. To the best of your ability, have you invited him into your heart? Do you really believe he's the son of God that died for you and rose again? If you did, don't worry and doubt. Don't let Satan twist your mind. Remember this. It is not where you are. You may be in fears. You may be somewhere where your family has forsaken you. All of those things may be true during 2021. But it doesn't matter where you are. It matters whose you are. And you belong to him. And who is Jesus? He's the one John described there in Revelation. In the midst of the seven candlesticks. One likened to the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And girt about the uh, paps of the golden girdle. And he goes on down to verse 17. When I saw him, John said, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto him, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. That's Jesus. And he told John, Don't you fear anymore. Quit fearing. We talked about family, both blood kin and non-blood kin. We talked about fears, another place you'll visit. Fears. John had them on the Isle of Patmos. You'll have an Isle of Patmos experience. He talked about faith, having faith because he had stayed true to the Word of God. We talked about his focus, not where he was, but who he was. But here's the best. Here's his friend. Would you write that word down, friend? He met his friend. Where on a place of fear he met his friend. You're going to meet Jesus. He's going to sneak up on you. I told you that. <laughs> Might be where you least inspect, expect it. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything
sang to God in prayer. <laughs> 2021 fears, yes. To get your focus right, not where you are, but whose you are. He'll sneak up on you, and it'll be your best friend, Jesus. Lord, thank you for the day we glory in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>